Hello and welcome to today's uh, episode of CEDH Bling Builds. Uh, today's deck is going to feature uh, another personal favorite of mine, uh, Circu, the Demir Lobotomist. Ooh, ooh. Now, what makes Circu interesting, well, what made him interesting in the days before uh, Thassa Oracle, Thassa Oracle, the Oracle X, um, you know, he is a lantern control deck. And now I know uh, in modern you have lantern control, and I think in legacy to some degree, lantern control. And you know everyone who commentates on lantern control, everyone who um, runs lantern control, or they make it seem like it's this uh, insanely difficult deck to pilot, which takes a mastery of the game, and deep understanding of uh, you know uh, your opponent. And and yada yada yada, all the ego boosters, right? And yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely true. And so, um, what makes Circu the uh, general for a, a lantern control deck is his ability, right? His uh, passive ability, where uh, one. I'm not going to read it twice, but whenever you play a blue or a black spell, uh, remove the top card of target library from the game. So if you could play at instant speed and you have knowledge of what's on top of your opponent's library, boom, that shit, it's gone. But his second passive, well, his third passive, uh, your opponents can't play non-land cards with the same name as a card removed from the game with your boy Circu the Demir Lobotomist. That is fucking huge in this homogenous meta, right? <clears throat> if I uh, get the opportunity to remove, uh, or Circu gets the opportunity to banish an opponent's Agnaws, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? No one, none of my opponents will be playing Ad Nauseam. <laughs> And so that's what makes Circu really, really good uh, in a stale, homogenous metagame. If you're playing your uh, casual friends who run, uh, who have average CMC of uh, 25, uh, Demir is not going to work. But in your sweaty pods, Demir puts in so much work. What makes uh, this Lantern deck different from uh, like a modern Lantern deck? There's no ensnaring bridge. In this deck, I used to own an ensnaring bridge, but I sold it, and I, I felt like it's not a hundred percent necessary uh, in this deck. And of course, the general, right? Um, also, there are no um, no thought sees uh, uh, type of cards in this deck. I, I might run them. Right? I just don't think they're that important in like a C uh, in EDH. But uh, nonetheless. Let's get into it. So you have Circu. Oh, and if you follow these videos, you'll notice that I um, triple sleeved the uh, the deck. Just try it out. I know, I know, I talked all that shit about triple sleeving, but I, I did it anyway. Whatever, forgive me. Uh, Lantern of Insight, uh, one drop artifact. It does a lot. Each player plays with top card of their library revealed. And that's that's the namesake of the deck, right? That's what this deck is all about. Knowledge. Um, and there are a whole bunch of like these lantern-esque cards another one field of dreams on the reserve list so it might not be uh, easy to casually run this you could just proxy it up I don't it's not my business uh, oh I should have uh, studied these names right <laughs> Fixus Fixus of Pandemonium uh, another lantern type ability you know if I don't like what's on top yeah, you get rid of it. Ghoul Caller's Bell, same thing. I don't like what's on top. Bye bye. Uh, Codex Shredder, and of course, Codex Shredder, Shredder uh, is another uh, artifact that has uh, big, big time, big time synergy with a uh, uh, Dramatic Scepter combo. All right, you just um, mill everybody. Oh, and that's a win con of this deck. Your Dramatic Scepter. Uh, that's a win come for a lot of decks, but 
with him in the command zone, you just dramatic scepter everyone, you're going to exile everyone's deck because it's still a blue uh, dramatic reversal. Codex Shredder, and there we go. Isochron Scepter 2, dramatic reversal. Um, and a top. Top is top is top is top because it combos with uh, dramatic reversal, Isochron Scepter, but, but we're going to rip a page out of the... Um, Book of uh, Legacy Miracles, and we are going to play Counterbalance. Counterbalance top. Mm, mm, very juicy. And then we're going to go into our creature package. We have a Trinket Mage. Oh, there's a special surprise. Came in the mail. Gilda Drake. Your boy, uh, Doth, Doth the Voidwalker. Um, he really shines in like a red. Black X decks with wheels, but I don't know. This could be something else. Ah, here he is. Ah, Bob. Ricky Bobby. Tar Confidant. Mass is Oracle. And moving on to our uh, enchantment package. We have the Mystic Remora and the Mystic Study. Um. And then, of course, there was a, the Counterbalance and the um, Field of Dreams. Very small uh, package. And th there's no like a no noteworthy cards like a counter, a copy artifact, or a Necropotence. They're not that important. That's a lie. The copy artifact could be, <laughs> could be a little important, right, to copy a, a Lantern. Uh, we're going to go to our rocks. We have uh, Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, the usual suspects, Arcane Signet, Fell War Stone, because we're in the most popular colors in the game, uh, Demir Talisman, Demir Signet, Talisman of Dominance, uh, uh, Jewel Lotus, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith, and then there's a Wish Claw Talisman. Moving along to our instants and sorceries. Um, I couldn't do this in one take because it's triple sleeved. Uh, the deck is like a three stories high. We have our counter package, Mana Drain. Witch Spell, Dispel, Swan Song, Mist, Cast, Bluster Storm, Mental Mist Up, Fierce Guardianship, Force of Negation. Act of negation. Oof, so cloudy. So cloudy. Everything's so cloudy. And uh, force of will. Moving along to our tutor package, we have the vampiric, imperial, demonic tutor, scheming symmetry. Oh, oh, scheming symmetry is such a badass fucking card in this deck because what I do, I'll tutor whatever I want. And you know what's going to happen to the uh, opponent? <laughs> it's going to get exiled because uh, this black card is going to trigger Circu's ability. So I'll just, uh, I'll still see him in symmetry, the weakest opponent, because just in case some stupid stuff happens. Praetor's Grasp. Mystic Tutor. Merchant Scroll. Muddle the Mixture. And then our artifact tutors, we have a Fabricate, Transmute Artifact, Reshape, and Were of Invention. And then our Removal Package, we have a Slaughter Pact, Chain of Vapor, Winds of Rebuke, Cyclonic Rift, and the Toxic Deluge. Our Draw Package, OG Brainstorm. OG Preordain, OG Ponder, OG Get Probe, Windfall, and of course the Time Twister. Add Nause, that's part of a draw package, and Peer into the Abyss. Of course, of course, of course. The best of the rest, we have Yogg's Will, and then our Rituals, Dark, Cabal, Reign of Filth. There's no um, calling the weak in this deck. Or no sacrifice. Because I might be able to combo off before Circle even hits the board. Uh, 
and then the best, uh, more of the best of the rest, some combo pieces to Mana Consult and the Tainted Pact. And then wrapping things up with our lands, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, I did want to mess around with the uh, Urza Saga. I don't own Urza Saga. I think it's a little too slow, but it is free tutoring, and it is free tutoring for things I would want uh, to, to tutor for in this deck. So I'll, I'll, prox I'll proxy it up for, for a moment, right? A little index card or something, just to try it out. So I don't know if it's going to be part of my 28 land package or as like a... Uh, somewhere else, right? I don't know how to count Urza Saga, but somewhere there should be an Urza Saga in this deck, I think. I'm not too sure. I'm not 100% sold on it. We have our fetches. Our, what is this? Our seven fetches. We have our regular island and our snow island, our regular swamp and our snow swamp. This is a standard Tainted Pact um, mana base. We have our duels, right? OG and Shock. And then the other ones are Morphic Pole, or Underground River, or Sunken Ruins, and the Clear Water Pathway. I, I, I don't know how I feel about the um, new cycle and the new Innistrad. Uh, I have really bad luck when it comes to those type of lands. Like, uh, the fast land, I'll, like, never open with it. And now the slow ones, I'll always open with it. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them. I always, always stay away from those things. Command Tower, Spire of Industry, Mana Confluence, City of Rest, Gemstone Cavern. And then the best for rest are Artifact Lands, right? And Artifact Synergy, Mentor Fair, Buried Ruin, Academy Ruin. And then see the Sinai and Vault of the Whispers, just something to, um... Transmute artifact with and that is circle that is lantern control really good deck if you want to try something different You could go with the lantern strategy for a while like cocktease with that before you just uh, that's his oracle away uh, But it does take experience 